right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from Orlando, Florida by Harry Spate. How are you doing, Harry? I'm doing great, John. Beautiful San Diego, beautiful Orlando, Florida. I think we both have it made. Yeah, we got the coast covered here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, and Harry's keynote speaker, coach and author of Selling with Dignity, Your Formula for Life-Changing Sales Results. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the concept of selling with dignity. So, um, you know, Harry, let's get straight into it. I always like sometimes when I a book is an interesting title like this is just to ask um, the author, uh, What's the genesis of the book? Where where, do, where where did the idea come from, and why did you feel the need to to write it? Oh my goodness, John! How much time do you have? Uh, <laughs> the short the short version is is that I used to be a missionary before I got into sales. So when I got into sales, I was the complete fish out of water. But I liken it to a missionary in a sales bullpen. So if you're familiar with the movie mm -hmm. Boiler Room or Wolf of Wall Street, you might have an idea of a sales bullpen. Well, I was a guy that yeah. just came out of a foreign country. I hadn't sworn in 15 or 20 years. And being in the sales bullpen, my world was upside down. So I learned quickly that the best way for me to sell was to go back to my roots, which was to serve people. And that's not really promoted in sales or it wasn't back, you know, 25 years mm -hmm. ago. So I wanted to write a book to let others know who are servant minded that you could succeed in sales and sales leadership in, without necessarily being the pushy, egotistical, all about me salesperson. How's that? Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that's that's excellent. And, uh, and for those of you who, who are watching or listening, who haven't experienced the sales bullpen when they came on many shapes and different forms and shapes and sizes but just think about think about a a room with either an open open room or cubicles or whatever with just lots of people with headsets banging away on the phones right <laughs> absolutely yes and yelling for the manager and everyone's name with their numbers on the whiteboards on each end of the room yeah it was it was pressure packed to say the least yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, so so Harry, what what is when you flipped, right? When you flipped and decided, okay, I can't sell this way. I need to I need to go back to to the roots um, of of selling with service. Um, what 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 started to change, and what was it like initially? Because obviously, like everybody else, a lot of the rest of the people were probably still using the other tactics. What it was like when you made the switch. Well, I had to make the switch because I was failing miserably. I was actually, you're the first to know this, but I found an old PIP, uh, perform, for those who don't know, oh, yeah. a, a yeah, yeah. performance letter, which I signed because I was putting up zeros. And I had no idea what I was signing and what it meant, but it was like, basically, you better shape up or you're done. And so, right. which I didn't know, I thought they were just being really nice and say, we're going to give you some extra love and all of this. But what happened was I just on the way home one day, I said, you know, this is miserable. I'm failing. And I said, you know, my, the thing I do best is serve. And so mm -hmm. as I thought about that, I said, I'll just kill people with customer service. I'll be the best customer service minded salesperson there is. And when I started doing that, I just went into the calls, everything about was serving people, what I could do for them. And then my world just started to change, you know, uh, so sales started to happen. And the way I treated people was way in a way that I could easily get referrals. And, you know, that's how my business grew. And one of the things that I see this looking at your book here is um, is what you talk what you talk about a, a lot is the is the human element, and I think that is something that I think has really come into stark uh, stark focus over the last while. Because I mean, you mentioned there's there's AI, there's automation, and all of those things are great if they are helping enable you to be more human and to build better relationships but if they're replacing that 
then that's not so good. And, and I think right. that's unfortunately the trap that a lot of people fell into was almost, it's almost like trying to take the human out of the equation, but yet still exactly. selling to a human, which is quite yeah. bizarre in its own way. <laughs> exactly. In fact, I thought to go along with that in, uh, I left uh, my, the, one of my jobs in uh, 2013 as a VP of sales in Washington, DC, and everything was about metrics. I mean, there was, there's so little emphasis on people and relationships and trust and gut that it was all numbers and spreadsheets. And I said, you know, is this where sales is? Is it done? And thankfully I found out that that wasn't the case. It was, you know, it was getting to be pretty prevalent, but it's not true everywhere. And some people, especially small business owners don't need the metrics as much as they need the sales and they can work on skills and human relationships and really grow their business that way. And and I think those, some part of the problem also comes from the fact is that, I mean, sales has been portrayed pretty badly in, in popular culture. Um, and <laughs> that sure. people have, yeah, and that people have a lot of, you know, negative perceptions of, of sales. And unfortunately, I think some sales people play into that. Mm -hmm. But I think also, a lot of salespeople carry that baggage with them, even if they're not like that, they still kind of are almost apologetic for being in sales. Yeah. But you, you, you note as, uh, and we certainly promote this ourselves, that sales is a very, very noble profession. Exactly. So I, you know, the title of my book is selling with dignity, but I keep saying, uh, my messaging that sales is life and life is sales. And if you're selling with dignity, you're living with dignity. Right. You cannot be the person that is serving other people, then go home and be a jerk and, you know, mistreat your family, mistreat your you know children and mistreat your community and make it all about yourself. So if you're doing the right things for your clients, that should carry over and make you think about doing the right things for those that are around you on a regular basis. So, yeah, yeah no, that's I, the I, message. I, I, yeah, no, I, 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 I totally, I totally agree with that, and and I think, uh, and I think more and more, I think the the buyer, um, customers, they're looking, they're looking for that. They're looking not to just, you know, purchase from from a, a vendor or whatever. They're looking to trust the people. They're looking to build, to feel like yes, you know, I have some connection or relationship with this. And I think that was that was beginning pre pandemic with the pendulum was swinging back. But I think mm -hmm. after the pandemic, um, that's become even more prevalent where, where people just, people just want to trust. They want human connection. They want to, they want their interactions to mean something. Yeah. I, I really love that. And I've seen that as well. It seems to be that you can really collaborate more with the client and, you know, just be open about that. I mean, I tell people all the time that I'm a collaborator and I like their input. And, I, you know, it's just such a nice way uh, to work towards a, you know, a culmination ending in a deal. Not that the deal ends everything, but that's just the way, you know, it can go is that you're working together versus I've got this for you. I'm smarter. I know what I'm doing. So buy, for, you know, buy this. Mm -hmm. You get their feedback, their input, they help design the program, then, you know, they've already bought into it. What's your thought on that? No, I, I, I agree. And I, and I think part of that, too, is then is if, if you have that if you have that mindset, then you're also going to be selling something that you that you believe in. Right. And I think that's the most I think that's one of the, the key components as well Is how many times have you gotten prospected by or cold call or whatever by somebody who the minute you start talking to them you don't even but you, you know they don't even want to call you they didn't want to <laughs> do the call in the first place they don't really believe anything they're saying yeah. they're you know they're beaten you can tell they're just like yeah. oh here's another one and you're not going to buy from me either um so you sure. you, you have to really believe in what you're doing in order to be able to create that level of excitement that's going to you know that's going to bring the other people, other person in. Yeah, exactly. And I love to uh, take those calls. Well, not always, but frequently I'll take the call knowing that it's a telemarketer and I'll ask how their day is going. And, you know, I'll just say, how, how's the job? How, how are the calls? How are people reacting? <laughs> and try to get them to laugh a little bit and feel good. 
And then they come back and try to pitch me. And I'm like, you know, I'm not buying. I'm just trying to make yeah. your day better. And, and you know, frequently I'll get to thank you. And you made me chuckle. And, uh, you know, the world can use that for these poor people. Not poor, and, you know, but it's not, it's a thankless job in a lot of cases mm -hmm. being a telemarketer. No, absolutely. And even and and the other thing today is, you know, a lot of I mean, a lot of salespeople just will avoid the prospecting part completely if they can oh my goodness. Just wait, yeah. wait for the leads to come in because um, because they don't want to do that. Um, but it's so not true. Yeah. If, if you're going to if you're going to if you're going to be service oriented and build relationships, you you have to you have to start at the very beginning. Yeah. I mean, I, I so love what you just said, John. It's uh, I compare it to uh, you're a server in a fine dining restaurant and your table has arrived so you can stay there in the kitchen and, you know, peer through the window and say, oh, my table's here. I'm so nervous. I'm not going to go out and talk to them. Uh, I hope they go away. I would really feel uncomfortable if they wanted to order something or why are they here? You know, all the things that no server would ever say. Mm -hmm. So the server goes out, greets people, does their thing, shows incredible kindness, great service, asks for the order. Well, that's our opportunity as well in sales. So I just say your table has arrived. What are we going to do? We cannot sit behind the computer and say, well, I can't go there. I've got another email I have to respond to or I have to, <laughs> right? I have mm -hmm. to uh, clear out my inbox or I have to post something on LinkedIn. No, go serve the people. That's how your business grows. Yeah. And then, um, Harry, so how, how, what difference does that make? Um, and, and tell me when, when you adopt that, when you adopt that attitude and you start to do your prospect or whatever, how does it change your mindset if you're coming from a place of service? Uh, I mean, number one, it just takes away the concern that you're bothering people. And this is the number one thing is so when I talk to solo and entrepreneurs, they say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to bother people, but you're not yeah. bothering. You're the best person, right? It's your table. So it's as the server is going and asking if they want to refill on their water or their wine or dessert, you're just doing that. And if they say, no, my, I'm all set on the wine or I don't need a dessert. We're not offended. We're just serving. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that carrying that attitude really takes away that negativity of the no and people are just all set right now. It doesn't mean they don't want something the next time they come in or even further down the courses of the meal. What's, does that no, make sense? Yeah, no, yeah. That, that makes complete sense to yeah. me. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And, and I think, uh, and I think the other part is, um, is when you're looking at, when you're looking at today is, as I said, it's very easy to, too high behind technology, as we said, you really have mm -hmm. to, but technology is your friend if you use it in the right way. And if you use it to give, as I said before, to give yourself more time to do the relation, the relational bit and to bring the creativity that, uh, that humans can bring that AI is never going to be able to bring. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And John, I, I love what you're saying. The, uh, imagine people back in the days of the 1920s, when the telephone came out, yeah. <laughs> they said, "Oh, this newfangled phone business." Now, I like to walk. I like to be in front of people face to face. Well, imagine if they never adapted to the telephone, and then you know, years later, you know, people didn't like email, and then people became entrapped in email, and now it's not even email; it's social media. So there's always this conflict, right? How much do you? spend mm -hmm. on the technology versus being in front of people and the more we're in front of people the more we're stirring the pot that way i believe the more success we'll have yeah and i think then the part is uh, and then when you when you get in front of the people um as you alluded to earlier um there has to be some value in the communication even if it's a cold call you know it has to be done in such a way as the other person is like okay yeah you've interrupted my day i didn't ask you to call me but uh, I'm, I'm okay with the way you're approaching this exactly so even you know the simple things about compliments you know complimenting people on their office complimenting people on the people they work with bringing a big smile a firm handshake, right? Showing that you're respecting the person and then saying, you know, 
there are people have different views on this. I I'm, I'm not apologetic, but I'm I'm saying I'm going to be brief, so I'm not moving in. I don't mm -hmm. want people to think that I'm moving in for the day, and the first thing they're going to say is I don't have time for this. I'm going to yeah. say I'm going to be here in and out within a minute. I really appreciate you coming out to see me. Big smile, and then not necessarily a pitch. This is what we do. I was curious if there might be an opportunity to set up a meeting for a future day. Uh, would that work for you? And just being polite and respectful, complimentary, you're providing some value, right? You're not just there mm -hmm. about yourself being slimy and pushing people and being the loudest person in the office. I view it as being a guest being polite, respectful, sort of like you're taking your shoes off before you walk into someone's house. Yeah, I know. And I agree. And and here's the sad thing, I think, uh, about all of this is that uh, if you were if you're if you're polite, if you're nice, if you're engaging, unfortunately, today, you're going to stand out in a good way. So it's, it's yeah. great for you. Um, but it's a sad reflection on uh, I mean, people are you people are used to a lot of kind of snappy rudeness, like people, um, you know, being very pushy, all of that stuff. Uh, and mm -hmm. uh, and it's not just to do with sales. It's everywhere now. So, I mean, I think I think that I don't think you can underestimate that politeness and just having having a friendly demeanor, you know, because I think it's very disarming. And people people really I think people really react well to it. And they shouldn't because it should be pretty normal, but uh, right. it's not. <laughs> right, it's not. <laughs> it is extreme. I was in a uh, medical office recently, and the person that was serving me was having a bad day and very disgruntled. And I broke the ice with some comment, and she just totally warmed up and melted and uh, said, you know, I've actually been put on some kind of warning because of the way I react with people. And I'm like, I wanted to say, no kidding, really? But it's <laughs> funny. She was a task person and she was in the job of dealing with the public and it just wasn't a good fit. Yeah. And, you know, she understood that. But the point is she was ready to go at me. And of course, I mean, in self-defense mode, you're like, oh, really? You're going to yeah. want to get it all? And it's just like, you got to breathe and say, there's another human being in front of me. How do we get along? And you, when you do that in the sales mind and things, even when someone's really rude, you know, politely leave, say, you know, I'm, I'm not a good fit for you. <laughs> you have a great day, right? And smile. It's just time to move on. You don't have to argue, mm -hmm. right? And your point there is, uh, I mean, is a very good and a very solid and very straightforward one is it's two, it's two humans interacting, or maybe it's one human interacting with three other humans, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's human. And, and it's that old adage, like, isn't it like treat others as you'd like to be treated, you know, yourself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that in a sales call, if you're thinking, okay, if I want to get the best reaction coming back at me, how can I approach it? And if I get a negative reaction out of the gate, how can I disarm that as opposed to react to it? Exactly. Yeah. I, I love the disarming. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what the term is, but when you have a, less than friendly potential buyer and you win that person over and they become a client, they can become super loyal, incredible clients mm -hmm. because you've, you've crossed a bridge that they don't let a lot of people cross into their lives. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a skill, right? It's, you know, recognizing mm -hmm. that people are different and I'm sure you've done this once or twice over your career too. <laughs> Yeah, I had I had one I had one great challenge one time when it was actually it was with the private equity group and it was I was helping with the parent company sell one of their companies at the time, and there was one guy and over many days right there was one guy the, the one of the main guys who was just so serious kind of snarky you know not mm -hmm. that great and I just and I just decided myself I thought before this is over I'm going to make him laugh. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, and I did, and I did, uh, um, and I can't remember what it was I did, but it was yeah. something silly. But I did, I made him laugh, and I decided to just take that on as a challenge, as opposed yeah. to you know just being reactive. Right, and people miss opportunities like that. Right, whereas you know some of us will see this is an opportunity to earn some trust. 
that a person is not really outgoing and trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And others will say, well, that person is just rude. I don't like them. I don't get along with that person. I wish that person wasn't part of the meeting. I wish, I wish, I mm -hmm. wish, which means nothing. It's you have an opportunity to win people over and let's, you know, use our skills and we can do that. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Well, especially if you got if you if you got that if you, if you got in the group if you've got that one rude like cutting yeah. person. I mean, you can always disarm that by going, "Oh, Harry, I know you you will have a strong opinion on this, right?" <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you have a strong opinion. Obviously, yes. That would yeah. be we don't like you, Harry. <laughs> Harry, you go away and let me get back to my corner office so I can grunt some more or something. But that's what, that is true. You know, you might get a response sometimes. Well, I just don't like salespeople or yeah, something. It's like, I totally understand. And, you know, you yeah. just, I don't trust all salespeople either. And uh, I get it, right? And you put yourself in someone else's shoes, but it is, it is funny. Yeah, no, it is funny. And I think the other, the other funny thing that I often comment on is when I was doing work some years back, we did global consulting on sales. And a lot of these big companies, um, big global companies with huge sales forces, they wanted to, they said, oh, we need to customize all this training because we don't call our, our people salespeople. Mm -hmm. We call okay. them and whatever. And I always go, yeah, yeah, we can do that. And I said, but, but just an aside, the people they're talking to know their salespeople. So you can call them whatever they want, whatever you want, but they still know they're a salesperson. Exactly. <laughs> we, we, we're trying to hide it from everybody, but if you're if you're talking about your company, your service, your product, I'm pretty sure the listener understands that you're a salesperson, no matter what disguise you're wearing. Yeah. That's yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, so be it. So to your point is like, be, embrace it be the best one you can be a service person and embrace it just be be because as we said at the outset it's a noble profession so just exactly. embrace it yeah exactly there's no shame in it it's uh it's an honorable profession and you're doing i mean you're driving the economy number one yeah you're putting food on the plates on the table for the, the employees of the company you're creating jobs right the more you sell mm -hmm. the more people have to be hired you're helping the community because you're probably donating something to charity. You're buying in the local community. And so how do you not like it? There is so much. I mean, as other smart people have said over the years, everything starts with a sale. sale. Right? Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. I, and I couldn't agree more. Well, listen, Harry, this has been great. All Harry's information will be below this video. And the book, again, is find it here selling with dignity uh your formula for life-changing sales results so available from harry's website available from amazon and all good booksellers exactly. before we go harry please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do yeah so what i'm doing now is helping entrepreneurs and small businesses with sales uh to help them to get over the fear of selling to get rid of the sliminess of selling that selling can come from a great place of serving and i could help you to become much more successful where your businesses thrive and good things happen so that's what i do thank you john for having me it's yeah awesome. fantastic yeah it's been great thanks harry thank you all for watching and listening and i'll see you all again soon thank you